Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Join Wyoming PBS for our next Capital Outlook Interim Edition as we continue to visit with policymakers during this unprecedented time. As the governor is preparing to submit his budget in November, we visit with legislators to get their perspective on the severe revenue shortfalls facing the general fund budget and K-12 education, even as it moves forward with recalibration. This program is supported in part by a grant from the BNSF Railway Foundation, dedicated to improving the general welfare and quality of life in communities throughout the BNSF Railway Service Area. Proud to support Wyoming PBS. By a grant from AARP, serving the needs and providing real possibilities for the over 50 population in Wyoming. AARP Wyoming. Proud to support Wyoming PBS. And by Wyoming Humanities, celebrating our heritage, strengthening our democracy, and growing Wyoming's creative and cultural economy for over 50 years. Visit thinkwhy.org. Welcome viewers to this special interim edition of Capital Outlook. I'm Craig Blumenschein from Wyoming PBS, and today we're going to take a deep dive into the upcoming huge task in front of the Joint Appropriations Committee. They have a, a huge, huge task in balancing the budget that Governor Gordon will give to them in mid-November. Later in the show, we'll visit with JAC members, Representative Mark Kinner, Kinner excuse me, and Senator Mike Garou. But we want to lead off the show by visiting with two other longtime Wyoming legislators, Senator Larry Hicks and Representative Tom Walters, both also members of the Joint Appropriations Committee. To you both, welcome to Capital Outlook. Thank you, and thank you for the invitation to be here today. You have a mountain to climb, and I don't even know that that's a good descriptive term here in, in what you're going to have to do to the budget that you'll get from Governor Gordon here in mid-November. But before we talk about that, um, let's talk about what you both expect to see in the Consensus Revenue Estimating Group's report that will come before your committee here on Monday. What is it that you're expecting to see? And Representative Walters, let me uh, give you a first crack at this. Well, thank you, Craig. Uh, I think we'll hear from the uh, Consensus Revenue up Estimating Group an update that shows a little brighter outlook than we saw in their May update. Does it mean we're out of the woods as a state? Absolutely not. But I think it will show that there's a slight uptick in sales and use taxes, some of that coming from the uh, federal dollars that have been put in through the CARES Act, some of it through the federal dollars that were direct payments to uh, members of, of the Wyoming uh, from the federal government in, in May and, and early June. So some of that is showing an increase. There are still some concerns. Uh, drilling is still lackluster throughout the state. Uh, Trona exploration is, is okay. Coal, as we know, is way down, uh, both in production and in prices. And, and a lot of that comes from a slowdown throughout the country. When, when auto manufacturers in the Midwest are not building cars, they're not generating or having a need for the power generation that they would on a typical year. And so all of that is, is combined to show some lower uh, revenues in those regards. But overall, I think we will see a slightly brighter outlook than we saw in May. When you say slightly brighter, um, I, I think I wanna maybe give Senator Hicks an opportunity for caution here. Is this a difference between horrific and horrible, if there is a difference in those two words, Senator Hicks? Yeah, I guess that's how I'd characterize it. We went from a complete disaster to a, um, something that's slightly, uh, slightly better than a complete disaster. So let me let me let me couch that. So when we started out, um, we were looking at a 1.5 billion dollar uh, deficit based on uh, the earlier Craig reports, and so the the uptick uh, we did see in May, we moved that estimate from a 1.5 to a 1.4 billion dollar deficit. Um, we do, and I would agree with Representative Walters, we've seen a few positive things, uh, <clears throat> but I, I don't see positive being a $1.3 billion deficit. So um, certainly we're in a situation, even today with the 
the, the slight increase in the forecast is, is the biggest challenge economically Wyoming's ever faced in our history as far as the, the level of the deficit. So give us a time frame here of, of what um, constituents can expect to see. The budget comes before you on, uh, or excuse me, the Craig report comes before you next week on Monday. You'll get the governor's budget in mid-November. Is it my understanding then that you'll work through December to give the next legislature a balanced budget and take a, um, if the governor has additional cuts, which most, most think that he will, you'll also then have additional cuts to provide a balanced budget to the legislature by the end of the year. Is that the plan? Well, that, ideally, would that be the plan? Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know that we're going to get to a balanced budget because a balanced budget would be predicated on the assumption that revenues equal expenditures, and that's not going to happen, Craig. Uh, we're going to do a, a deep dive. Uh, we have been spending down our, our rainy day account, the legislative stabilization reserve account. Uh, we're looking at, at another significant draw uh, in the current uh, fiscal year that we're in right now. Uh, it, for the biennium, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of taking that from a 1.5, uh, you know, dependent on the scenarios moving forward, uh, we could be as low as 900 million in that <clears throat> by the end of the biennium. Worst case, it could be 500 million. Um, so, we're not going to have a balanced budget. We haven't had a balanced budget for, for going on two years. Uh, we've pulled over $280 million out of the, uh, the rainy day account the last two years. Uh, we're on pace for somewhere between four and $500 million uh, this year. Uh, so the idea that we're going to have a balanced budget come d December to present to the legislature, I, I think, is an unrealistic expectation. Uh, hopefully we can move in that direction, uh, but, but to get to a balanced budget um, uh, because of the delay in any revenue increases, let's just call it what it is, tax increases, uh, would have at least a year's lag time from anything we passed. It's impossible to get to a balanced budget within the next year. So we will continue to spend our rainy day account down. Um, yeah, we're going to have to make additional cuts above and beyond what the governor's already done, and that's going to be across the board. You know, the, 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 the component that we're really faced with now is, is the governor's gone in under the general fund, which is the primary agencies that run the state of Wyoming, and done an initial 10% and done some freezing to get the process started. Uh, we still have K through 12, uh, which we have about a $400 million deficit, structural deficit in. Uh, that we're going to have to deal with this session. Uh, so the idea that, that come December and through this session, we'll have a balanced budget, I think, is unrealistic. Um, this is going to be a two-year process to try to get to something that even resembles. And the real debate, I think, that, that's going to have to occur in the Wyoming is so what is going to be the sufficient level of cuts? What are people comfortable with spending down in a rainy day account and at what time do we look at tax increases and, and, and how much tax increases as they'll be? So there's three big overarching questions that the legislature and the people of the state of Wyoming are going to have to grapple with over the next two years. Representative Walters, do you agree with that? Well, I think uh, Senator Hicks uh, makes some good points there. Uh, I would caution and, and point out to the people of Wyoming that we do have a balanced budget. Admittedly, it comes by spending some of the savings account, the rainy day fund, to create a balanced budget. But I don't want people to go away from this program thinking that we are in a, in a living in an unbalanced budget time. Uh, because because Wyoming has a, a mandate to make sure our budget is balanced. And so it is balanced. And yes, it is balanced using a rainy day fund to do that. And by being able to use a rainy day fund to do that, it means Wyoming has well positioned itself in the past to address these concerns that they're coming in the future. If we did not have that rainy day account, it would have been a cliff that we would have pushed ourselves off of because this rainy day account allows us to cushion the uh, reductions. It allows us to phase those reductions in over time as our revenues slow and, and our expenditures have not slowed as rapidly as our revenues have. So I think, uh, as I said, Wyoming positioned itself well many years ago to be able to face this kind of a future. 
However, it is now, the future is now, and we must start to address things. Just as Senator Hicks pointed out, revenue increases are going to have to be on the table and discussed, which are the good ones, which are the most positive, which have the, the least amount of uh, harm to the citizens of Wyoming. All of those discussions must take place, and the sooner the better. Uh, in terms of the- We've watched a lot of those. Uh, excuse me, if I can just interrupt for just a minute. We've, we've watched a lot of those discussions in the last two or three years in the Revenue Committee. And of course, that's brought essentially, not a lot. What's the JAC's role now going to be in revenue discussion? Do you anticipate that this is, might end up in, a, in one way or another following to your committee? I think a JAC will be very uh, important and, and probably the key committee that will bring both reductions in the budget as well as revenue enhancements to the legislature in the upcoming session. And quite frankly, in the upcoming two sessions, uh, not just in 2021, but as well in 2022, I think the Joint Appropriations Committee will be the spearhead for, for reductions and revenue enhancements. Is that gonna be the, uh, the same thing that you're, you'll be thinking, Senator Hicks? Well, I, I, I think it's a bigger picture thing um, across the board and, and uh, I honestly think that you're going to see a, a potential tax increases come from a lot of different areas. Uh, maybe some suggestions are coming from JAC. Uh, I think by the time we get to next year, um, maybe the Revenue Committee, but obviously any of the 90 legislators can bring uh, legislation to that effect. And I would anticipate seeing some of that across the board from from revenue, JAC, and, and also, and it may be House uh, uh, Appropriations, it could be Senate Appropriations Committee. Uh, the, the fact is, is the reality is, is we're going to have to have those discussions. And, and where they come from yet, I think is left undetermined. Essentially, tell me if I have this right, the governor maybe has cut a third of the problem away. He might cut another third of the problem away with the budget he hands to you and leave the last third or so to you. So in a sense, between now and the end of the year, two thirds more than what has already been cut may also be, be cut. Is, is that an oversimplistic view or is that somewhat accurate that just a little bit of the work has been done and there is so much more cutting, for lack of a better word, to do? I would say the governor through uh, reductions and freezes uh, uh, has probably done closer to half of the work and still has half to go. And so I think a combination of legislative action and based on the governor's recommendations, the other half is to be seen. I think a lot more of what will be seen is going to be program elimination as opposed to uh, an across the board reduction as we saw this first round. Uh, but I think in December, as JAC reviews the, the governor's budget that he puts forward, uh, as you said, about mid-November, we will also be going back as, as the JAC and the legislature and reviewing what he did in the first round of reductions. And I think there are members of the legislature that weren't too keen on some of his reductions, and so they will try to reinstate some of those and make reductions in other places. I don't see the dollar value uh, improving. I see it staying the same in the legislature reducing more dollars, it just might be a, a difference of where the, some of those dollars come from. But uh, the governor will present that uh, in late uh, November. Senator Hicks, what are you, what are you, th yeah, what are you thinking about this? Um, well, I think you characterized it. We're probably somewhere in the third, a third, a third, the, the, the you know, we just, uh, we just saw a little glimpse of, of what the governor's actual 10% cuts are. So I'm going to reserve judgment. Uh, some of the stuff that uh, the, the stuff that I've just seen in the last couple of days uh, gives me pause for concern. I, I don't consider reducing an agency's budget and then passing that on to uh, consumers in the form of fees a cut. And quite frankly, when I saw a couple of those, um, I don't know that we got to the 10%. We don't know yet because we have not seen everything the governor has done as far as his initial 10%, uh, nor the proposed 10%. So I'm gonna reserve judgment, but I think your, your characterization, what we were hoping we would see uh, is the simplistic view was a third, a third, a third. Obviously um, <clears throat> the legislature will get the tough third. 
you know, the, the easy stuff will come off the top. It'll be the last third. It's going to be the tough stuff. Well, I wish we could talk more, gentlemen, but we want to move on. Uh, Senator Larry Hicks, Representative Tom Walters, first of all, best wishes to both of you for the work that's in front of you and, and the Joint Appropriations Committee, but also I know it's a busy time and I appreciate your joining us today on Capital Outlook. Thank you so much. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Up next, we're going to continue the discussion with Senator Mike Guru and Representative Mark Kinner. Stay with us. And as we continue this discussion with members of the Joint Appropriations Committee here on Capital Outlook Interim Edition, it's my pleasure to be joined by Senator Mike Guru and Representative Mark Kinner. Welcome to you both. Thanks for joining us at this Capital Outlook. Yeah, good morning. Happy to be with you this morning, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Always good to be with you. We just heard from Senator Hicks and Representative Walters, and I want to get into a lot of the same discussion with you. You're about to see a consensus revenue estimate, estimating group's report here on Monday. What do you think you'll see? Representative Kinner, let me give you the first shot with that. Uh, okay, well, um, I guess we're hoping, Craig, to uh, actually see some improvement uh, in the numbers. And I think um, over time, we've tried to take a, a pretty cautious look. I'm glad that, that Craig does that, uh, takes a pretty cautious look so that we don't uh, overinflate the numbers. And uh, so I think we've seen uh, some good things happen. And I think uh, we anticipate uh, seeing that. Of course, we're not sure exactly what they're gonna come up with, but I think as you know, and maybe as folks know, this is the only time of the year that this estimating group um, gets together and really forecasts uh, what the future might look like. And I think they have a little better picture now than they've had over the last couple of months, you know, with the COVID and everything else that's happened. Um, so, so this is the, the annual report and it's updated. It'll be updated in January, uh, you know, for, for the session purposes. And, and then it's updated a couple of times throughout the year, but this is the real, the real thing. So I guess we're hopeful of that, but I think the one thing that I, having said that, that we need to keep in mind is that uh, this, this is, is better news, but it's, we're not out of the woods. Uh, it, it's, it probably will be an improvement, but the one thing we do know is that it will probably not have affected the school foundation side. And uh, so that's going to be the, be the real challenge for us going forward in addition to the general fund uh, side. But, and I'll, I'll let Mike jump in and, and comment. Yeah, Senator Greer, I mean, we were talking about 1.5 billion and then maybe it got a little better to $1.4 billion deficit here. And does a little better maybe mean a 1.2 or $1.3 billion deficit still? Well, Craig, I'll leave that to the to the other Craig, the estimating group, to, uh, to come up with the, you know, to come up with what the numbers are. But as uh, Representative Kinner said, you know, the picture looks a little brighter because, as you recall, back in March, you know, oil oil prices were in the negative numbers. Uh, they forecasted forty dollars a barrel. It's closer to forty dollars a barrel now, so that's getting closer to on track. Um, with the with uh, the co with the COVID and the problems with uh, associated with it, it, they projected a 50% in some sectors, a sector I'm in, in the hospitality sector, a 50% down down bubble in uh, sales tax revenue. And actually that's come in quite a bit higher than that. We had a better summer than, uh, than we thought we were gonna have. I, I also think, and I wanna make sure we mention it, I think that the money that the legislature appropriated with the governor, um, from the CARES Act, that money going out to small business um, in the spring and in the summer really helped and helped make our businesses stronger and help them weather the, the, the COVID-19 troubles. And so, and I think spending that money out in the, that money going out to the business community where they spend it in their communities on employees and products and things kind of helped those numbers along. So I think that, that's something that we can't lose sight of. Um, but the, the bottom line is, and, and Representative Kenner touched on it, uh, so on the school funding side, I don't think the numbers are going to change. Uh, property, wow. tax, property tax property um, and, tax, and those and the taxes that fund schools haven't changed. So a $450 million deficit is, is still there. Um, what's going to be on the general revenue side? I think it's going to be better. But um, 
as as we were talking um, before we went on, before we went on, um, you know, the governor's made cuts. I know the governor said yesterday that uh, now the legislature is going to have to decide what they no longer want to fund. Uh, I don't know if I quite look at it that way. What I, I would say that, and I know the governor wants this too, is that what we need to do is now is have a statewide discussion about how we're going to address government funding going forward. Sure. One thing we haven't touched on is you often hear, well, we're either going to cut or by gosh, we got to make government more efficient. And you all have been through a very significant study on the efficiency of, of state government. And there are, have been savings outlined to you that perhaps can be enjoyed by some of these efficiencies. Are there any efficiencies that are um, on top of your list that were potentially really make a significant budget impact? Are there efficiencies out there still to be made in Wyoming state government? Really good question. And, and I think that's, that's the conversation that we really need to have. And I think uh, as, we, as we build up, and, and uh, you probably set the stage, I'm guessing, in the earlier session about uh, the process going forward. Did you talk about the November date and so on in the meetings yeah. in December? Okay. Right. All right. So, so that we need to have those discussions quite honestly. Um, and, and so um, that, that'll be really critical uh, for us to, to try to weigh in on that. Any, anything out there that you've seen Senator Guru that's really going to help here relative to efficiency? I think people, folks need to understand, and because these are great rhetorical points, but waste, fraud, and abuse are not line items on a budget. I've looked at a lot of budgets <laughs> in 30 years in government. I've never seen it. That having been said, I, I sit on a I sit on a on a task force right now that's um, rebasing costs for um, developmentally disabled kids and the and the programs that they receive, and they're, and and going through the cost of each individual provider and what they provide and how much they get charged for. Same thing with mental health and substance abuse. I'm on a task force that's working on that. So the legislature is working every day, and I know Representative Kinner does the same thing, works on committees and groups to try to ferret out those, those efficiencies and try to work as hard as we can to make government as lean as possible. But right now, we're, we are at that point where we're going to start cutting things that people are going to feel every day. Um, I mean, my neighbor's a disabled vet, and right now on, on, on one of the budget cuts that I've seen, there's a, there's a million-dollar cut to a program for veterans on license plates and, and taxes. That these, you know, so it's going to be right across my back fence. Um, I'm going to be feeling that one. And so those are the types of choices that you're going to see, and it cuts all the way across the spectrum. These are not ghost employees that are going to be cut. These are not just retirements that aren't going to be refilled. These are going to be pink slips. These are going to be people that you know in your neighborhood that aren't going to be working here. And the folks around the state have to decide, is that really where we want to go? Is that the type of government we want to have? And is it the size and effectiveness that we need? Representative Kinner, sure. So um, I think, and Mike can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the the uh, supplemental work that that the governor has done on on these cuts, I think it's something like sixteen hundred pages. Yeah, and so there's there's certainly a lot there, and we're we're weighing that, we're going through that on our own right now. Uh, but when we get together in December, we will begin to go through that um, really almost a line item by line item, and that's why we take uh, so long. And there will be a discussion, and and the Senate and the House will. We'll have to weigh in on that, along with the folks that come in and visit with us about their budgets. And uh, we, we will uh, probably be asking hard questions about, you know, do you really need these things? Um, you know, are these the nice to haves or are these the need to haves and, and the, you know, the wants that we talked about before? So, boy, um, but, you know, we, we're going to try to make sure that the process is very transparent. Uh, you know, even the the appropriations meetings next week will be uh, YouTube live, and uh, we want folks to weigh in on that and and uh, pay attention to that. And again, there's so much more that I wish that we could discuss, but let me give you both time to kind of uh, sum up here. And Representative Kinner, since you asked, we'll ask you first, and Senator Guru will give you the last the last word here. Well, Craig, the one thing I want to I want to let you know is that uh, my feeling and and those uh, that that are on the appropriations committee, we're not willing to throw in the white flag and surrender for our state. We, 
we're very optimistic about our future. We know we have some challenges. Uh, I think we're up to those challenges. We will get our heads together. Uh, all the legislators working with our constituents, working with our community leaders, working with the governor, we will work together. But I'm also very optimistic about the future of Wyoming. And I can only uh, speak really specifically uh, for things going on here, right here in the Sheridan area. But we have some really exciting things going on in the Sheridan area. And so it gives me a lot of, and not, not energy related, by the way. And uh, so some very, very exciting projects uh, that have been here and are getting stronger and then also new ones that are, are taking a look. And, and uh, so I, I just wanted to, to uh, even though we've talked about hard choices and, and tough decisions, uh, I, I'm very optimistic about our future here in Wyoming. Mark's absolutely right. You know, it's, this is a discussion that's been a long time coming and we all know it, those of us, and I know you, Craig, you've been a watcher of this for a long time. And, and so this is not, this is not something to be to be afraid of. This is something you know that that I, I too agree with Representative Kenner. The best days of the state of Wyoming are ahead, and what we need to do now is we need to focus in on the future. Um, we've had a great past, and 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 this and the state has enjoyed has enjoyed a, a wealth of, of mineral revenues that has funded this state for years. Well, now that picture is changing, and so now we have to change with it, and so. While it does involve tough choices now in the short term, in the long term, we are going to come out as a stronger state and a better state and a more diversified state because of these discussions. And the time is now. And is and, and, and Mark's right. You know, next week we start and we'll be starting in December. All the meetings are going to be live streamed and people really need to get involved. And I think they will be. We've seen it so far. People are people are weighing in. They know this is the real deal. And so we need to get started, but uh, I'm looking forward to the trip. So let's, you know, we're gonna, we'll, we'll make it through just fine. Wonderful positive note, I think, to, to leave the discussion on. And I, just a quick note to our viewers, November 20th will be our next interim edition of Capital Outlook. And we'll sit down for the, the entire 30 minutes with Governor Gordon as we step through the budget that he's going to provide here to the members of the Wyoming legislature. So to you both, thank you so much for joining us in this incredibly busy time and we with you wish you nothing but the best here as you step through this tough challenge thanks for joining us thank you very much thanks Greg. this program is supported in part by a grant from the bnsf railway foundation dedicated to improving the general welfare and quality of life in communities throughout the bnsf railway service area proud to support wyoming pbs by a grant from aarp serving the needs and providing real possibilities for the over 50 population in wyoming aarp wyoming Proud to support Wyoming PBS. And by Wyoming Humanities, celebrating our heritage, strengthening our democracy, and growing Wyoming's creative and cultural economy for over 50 years. Visit thinkwhy.org.